You've been called for jury duty and now you get called into a room and it's a bunch of attorneys talking about a medical malpractice case. What would make you the ideal juror for a medical malpractice case? You want to know the answer? Come join me for a moment as I share with you the answer to this question. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. All right, you might be thinking that now, as you're summoned for jury duty, you now have to schlep to the court, you have to go through security, you have to sit in a big room after you check in, and now you sit around and wait until your name is called. Finally, you get called into a room. The attorneys there tell you that this is a medical malpractice case, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I really want to serve my civic duty. I want to go ahead and get seated on a case. And you're thinking, what would make me the best type of juror for this case? Let me share with you a couple of thoughts that will make you the ideal candidate as a juror on this case. All right, the first thing is that you do not know the attorneys and you do not know the litigants, the people who are bringing the lawsuit or the people who are being sued. That's important because if you did know any one of the parties to the lawsuit, that would probably disqualify you. Why? Because in all likelihood, you would lean in favor of one side or the other. All right, what are the quality or trait is necessary for you to be a great juror in a medical malpractice case? Ideally, we don't want someone who's already been through this process before. So for example, if you have had experience in your own life or your own family where someone has brought a lawsuit against a doctor or a hospital for injuries suffered because of someone else's carelessness, well guess what? In all likelihood, you may not be the ideal candidate for this case. Why? Because we are looking for somebody with no prior experience doing this. We want somebody fresh, somebody who does not come in saying, yes, my brother went ahead and brought a lawsuit against this doctor because he did something wrong causing all these injuries. You already have preconceived ideas about this particular doctor or you, the doctor your brother went to, and now you may bring those feelings, those ideas into this particular case. And if your brother was successful and was able to obtain money and he was happy with it, again, you may want to go ahead and bend over backwards in favor of the injured patient. The defense attorney is not going to appreciate that. On the other hand, if your brother was unhappy, you may turn around and look critically at this particular case and wonder whether or not this patient truly is justified in all the damages that she is seeking. So it could be a double-edged sword. But ideally, we want to start with somebody who has no prior experience. Also, if you happen to be familiar with the injuries or the type of injuries that my client has suffered, again, that gives you a leg up and that may be better for you to understand the events or understand the patient's injuries. But from an attorney's standpoint, it might be a little troublesome. Why? Because now you may use your advanced knowledge of the medicine to sway some of the jurors during jury selection. Think about that. During the trial, we will have medical experts come in to explain the medicine to you, to explain what problems this patient has and things that she can and cannot do. If you know, based upon your own experience or your own personal knowledge about the injuries that this type of patient suffered and that part of the anatomy, you may either agree or disagree with any of the witnesses who testify about this type of condition and this type of injury. And you may now bring that out to the jury during the course of deliberations. And you may say, oh, that expert that this one brought in, oh, forget it, he's full of it. When I went through this problem, let me tell you what I had to do. And now you bring your own knowledge into the jury deliberations and you negate what the experts had to say. You negate what the testimony was. Why? Because you have this advanced knowledge about this particular area of medicine. And that's something that would be concerning for the attorneys. As long as you can be fair and impartial and tell the attorneys you can be fair and impartial and keep an open mind, that's going to make you an ideal candidate to sit as a juror on this case. So why do I share a couple of these thoughts with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into how these cases work, especially jury selection. Now the case has proceeded all the way to trial. We are at the point now where we are picking a jury. And now as soon as we have selected six members of the community who have told us they can be fair and impartial, the next step is we start your trial. You know, I realize you're likely watching this because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen here in New York, but you have not yet started a lawsuit and are thinking of doing so, 
What I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me if you still have questions. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a fantastic day.